this is Erin from Texas Chicks Blogs and Picks. Today I'm going to talk about some advanced features of Lightroom's local adjustment brush. Uh, we're going to focus today on using the flow and density sliders and how they can help you in your edits. Um, this is a photo that I've already done some global adjustments on, uh, meaning that I've applied adjustments down here from the basic section and below that apply to the whole image. There is my before and then after adding exposure, contrast, white balance, etc. I've gotten the image to this point. Now there are a couple of other things I'd like to do to tweak the image. Uh, first of which is that I want to make this hot spot on the balloon a little bit darker. This is called burning it in. I want to burn it to make it darker. And then my daughter's reflection in the balloon needs to be brighter. And there are also some color cast issues with this part of the image. Um, her face is a bit too magenta and too yellow, so I'm going to correct that as well. Now I'm going to start here with darkening this white area of the balloon. I'm going to start by turning on the local adjustment brush, and this is Lightroom 5. However, these features will work the same in prior versions of Lightroom. Now I do want to darken this area, so I need to reduce the exposure. And I'm just going to guess that I'll probably need a maximum exposure reduction of about a stop. So I am going to just type in a negative one right here. Now what I can see also is that most of the white area on the balloon is about this color. I would like to equalize the brighter parts with this color, but some of these parts that are brighter are not as bright as the others. So the easiest thing for me to do here is to use the flow slider. Flow governs how much of an adjustment I put on the photo at any one brush stroke. Um, so a maximum flow is 100, and if I were to paint on this exposure adjustment at 100% flow, then the full stop of exposure would be removed from the image. So I would darken this part of the image by a full stop. However, if I reduce my flow to about 30% or so, I am going to reduce the amount of paint that is applied with any one brush stroke. So I'm going to start by making my first brush stroke over this brightest part of the balloon. Then I'm going to type the letter O so that you can see my red overlay. Now this is not very red, it's actually a very light pink. This indicates to me that the adjustment has not gone on at full strength, number one. And number two, I've missed quite a few spots so you can see where my um, pink is not being applied to the brighter parts of the balloon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick up some of the areas I missed. And at the same time, I'm also going over some of the areas that I already painted. I'm making this adjustment even stronger. So as it is now, I've made about two passes with my brush over each area, which has given me still not yet a full negative one stop exposure reduction, but it's getting me closer. So this area right here is darker than the brightest areas of the balloon, but also lighter than the darkest areas. So whereas this brightest area is going to need several brush strokes to get enough coverage, the medium area is probably only going to need one. And so now you can see that I can just kind of continue building up my adjustment gradually using coats of paint that are lighter. This is very similar to using opacity in Photoshop or Elements. Now I'm going to turn off the red overlay by typing O just to assess where I am so far. And I am actually pretty happy with the coverage I've gotten. So the benefit of using this flow slider is that I can build up different strengths of my adjustment at differing opacities or different coverage amounts according to which part of the image I'm painting. Okay, so that's using the flow slider, plain and simple. The next thing we're going to do is brighten my daughter's face and adjust the color cast. Um, and rather than flow this time, we're going to use density. Now density is similar to flow. It governs how much paint or how much of an adjustment is going to cover your photo, how deep that adjustment is going to be with any given brush stroke. The difference with density is that it sets an upper limit. 
So if I were to set a limit of 50 on my density, then my exposure adjustment would never be more than a reduction of half a spot, which is 50%, right? So 50% of one stop is half a stop. Now that doesn't seem real useful at first, but I'm gonna show you how it works. So I'm gonna start out with my density at 100. Also gonna hit new brush because it's always important when we're changing edits to change um, I'm also going to hit new brush because it's always important when we're editing a different part of the photo to set up that new brush and the pen that governs it. So flows at 100, densities at 100. I know I want to brighten her face and so I'm going to guess it's just going to be somewhere close to a full stop that is needed. And I also want to remove some yellow so I'm just going to guess that my adjustment should be somewhere close to 20. And I want to remove some magenta as well. I'm probably going to pull this back just a bit. And so now I'm just going to click and drag over my daughter's face and her neck. Now I see a couple of things here. First off, this adjustment is too strong. And I can fix that in several ways. Uh, number one, I can go back and tweak the sliders over here in my adjustment brush panel. However, that would involve three different sliders. Now, if the exposure adjustment were worse, for instance, than my temp and tint sliders, that would be appropriate, right? So I could reduce exposure without changing the color um, edits that I made. However, if I want to reduce all of the edits proportionally together, I can just click on my pen and drag to the left. And you can see as I do that, that my sliders over on the right are all moving down. And so I can stop when I'm happy with the brightness and color correction of my daughter's face. I think I'll stop right about there. So what I'm noticing now is that this part of my daughter's face is too bright. The adjustment that I applied um, worked well for the darker side of her face, but it over brightened her nose and her cheek. Now looking at the overlay here, so I'm typing O for overlay, you can see that my full bright red overlay has been applied to her entire face evenly. So this bright red overlay indicates that the full adjustment was applied. Now I've got a couple of options. I can use my eraser brush and erase my adjustment over her nose and cheek and then add a new brush with less bright adjustments. Or I can use the density brush. This is where the density really is useful. So remember what the density slider does is it sets a cap for the maximum adjustment that can appear anywhere you've brushed. So by setting my density at 50%, I'm saying, hey Lightroom, wherever I've brushed, don't let this adjustment go more than 50% of what I've dialed in up here. So I can simply brush over her nose and cheek and you can see that my red overlay is getting lighter. It's not as dense as it is up here. So in this case, density has worked like an eraser and I'm erasing at 50% opacity or 50% strength. Turning off the red overlay, you can see now that her nose and her cheek are much more equal in color to the other side of her face. So that's using flow and density. To summarize, you want to use flow when you know that you're going to need varying strengths of an adjustment, and you can set a lower flow to build up your adjustment to as strong as you need it in specific areas of your image, and maybe not as strong in other areas of your image. Density, in my opinion, is best used as an eraser after the fact. So if you've brushed on your edit and you find that it's too strong only in parts of your image, then you can reduce the density and erase the strength or reduce the strength of your edit using a reduced density brush. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have other questions about Lightroom's adjustment brush, Check out my blog. I've got many Lightroom tutorials there as well as Photoshop Elements tutorials. My blog's name is Texas Chicks Blogs and Pics. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.